Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this in the morning. Starting chapter Gimel, Perik, Perik Gimel, chapter three. Okay. So basically, we said in chapter two that that it's that the way to learn Chassidus, so to speak, is about not it's not about the learning the subject. That's like the prefatory uh, things you need to do. But the main point of, of the learning Chassidus is to meditate on it. I think about what it's saying. Think about and and they think about all the details of it, being very specific and learning, and, and that's the way you should learn it. And is yeah, yeah, like he says in the psalm, knowledge is just the prelude to the meditation. Really, the purpose of the learning is is to meditate on it and think about it and see what it means and how we can apply it. Whoever didn't wasn't didn't have the merit to listen to yesterday's class from Rabbi Yom Walters or Shir, Harangan, whatever you want to call it, in honor of uh, Tess Kislev. You can go, it's going to be put up on the YouTube channel today. Beautiful talk explaining essentially this, how to learn Chassidus, and how to meditate on Chassidus, how to think Chassidus. Okay, today we'll start chapter three. Basically chapter three is going to talk about, like I already said this a few times, the chapter three, that's, Sometimes in the book, he's talking about specific situations that not necessarily apply to us now specifically, but, but it's, we learn it in general, so that's why we also learn it because we want to understand, it gives us more clarity, more understanding of, of what, what the Rebbe Rashab has in mind, and we can see how it applies to us. So basically what we're talking about today is is people that they govern and they, they govern at length and they think about ideas and they try to make like traditional like novel ideas and governing. Like, oh, this means try to make up all these different tradition, different novel ideas. Uh, and basically says it's not a good idea. In general, you shouldn't be doing this if you've been learning chassidus for many years and you're an older person and and you know, then if it could be what you're doing is true, but generally chances are it's not gonna be a good idea. And he says if if you govern properly, it will come by itself. And then you, and, that's fine, and those are totally fine. Let's see. Uh, page 42 on the top. Uh, number three, no, novel interpretations. In this chapter, the Rebbe ref refers to a custom prevalent at the time during prayer, which was to innovate explanations in the prayers, according to Chassidus. The Rebbe disapproved this completely. Unauthentic interpretations. Now, there are those who, and as you can see, this, I think if I'm not mistaken, I forgot what actually this whole this whole chapter is really a bracket. Yep, the whole chapter is actually a bracket. It's pretty funny. So now there are those who, while praying, formulate an original novel interpretations of passages of the prayers, prayer text. Understandably, people with more penetrating minds, original interpretations of greater depth, commensurate with their superior intellect. So people are trying to do this, make these chidushim during the davening, make these novel ideas, try to, try to say, oh, Learning to the words, what is what is meaning? What is a chiddush? Is is you take you you make a novel interpretation on an idea. So you say, oh, what this pasuk is really saying, or what this verse of Tehillim that we're reading in davening, or Pesukah de Zimra or Shema, according to Chassidus, you could say it means this, and they're trying to think about different like these different types of thoughts while they're davening. And he says, so a person that has a greater mind understands well, so listen things like this. So then his idea will be maybe greater, greater, better, make more sense, things like this. As a result, they become intellectually excited and their hearts too are drawn somewhat as explained above. So therefore, when they do this, like, oh, look at this brilliant idea I just figured out. And it's like, oh, it makes so much sense. And, and, they, and, and they think about, oh, this makes sense. Like according to that mimer, it should make sense. And, and so it feels good, not just not just mentally it feels good, but also also the heart feels good, and their hearts too are drawn somewhat. Explain explain above, and with this they fulfill, quote unquote, their obligation to engage in avoda through prayer. And this is their avoda. This is their spending the time, really putting the effort into davening, in order they can make these novel ideas. So he says, but that's not good. Now, besides the truth. Of these interpretations being very suspect, chances are of you making a chiddush like in this way is very highly unlikely, and probably they are unfounded. The soul's excitement is based upon something unauthentic. So therefore, when you get excited from this and you're getting all inspirational, the inspiration is coming from the wrong place because it's coming from something that's not actually real. 
The ham is especially pronounced when one builds upon it a structure of a particular kavano. And even worse is if you start to have kavanas based on this, you start to think, so what does that mean? And you start to meditate on certain ideas that you've sort of figured out yourself during prayer or request at the time of davening when you're asking Hashem for something. Since the basis is untrue, because the chances are what you've done, where the found is not necessarily a true thing. Yeah. When the foundation is demolished, the whole edifice um, topples. So, and therefore, so being that it's not essentially true, so if you're even if you're getting excitement, it's not a true excitement. It's like getting something from the wrong things, so to speak. You know, it's totally off. And then you can't say this also so this means that, that when you have Kavani, you want to get involved and, and, and meditate and really sh- you should feel it, it should change you. If it's changing you, but it's not coming from the right place, then, then it's not what we're talking about. At times, the prayer and request themselves may be proper, but the Kavana and the soul's subsequent ecstasy, whether in some specific aspect or in the underlying depth of general Kavana is not genuine. Due to their foundations being false, like he says in this bracket here, that even though their request themselves, what they're asking or what they're trying to connect to God is, is a true idea that they should and they want to, and they're doing that right. But the problem is, being that the whole that foundation for it is not right, so then it's not good. And therefore, everything like it, it comes false. It's like stealing money and then buying a little of an extra. It's nice you want to buy a little message and do a mitzvah, but it's come from the wrong place. So to their meditation or their thoughts their, that they have no ideas to come up with is, 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 is making the foundation wrong. Yet aside from the questionable reliability of such novel interpretations, the result, the resulting exhilaration is entirely superficial. And the, and the one of the, so to speak, proofs that it's not really true, that when they get excited enough, then they act all like excited and all, you know, feeling great. That's not really... You know, it's not, it's not deep. It's, it's very superficial. Nothing concrete results from it in terms of actual turning from evil and performing good. The excitement doesn't endure. It vanishes, disappearing immediately. And it doesn't last. And a simple way you can, you, can, you can test if this idea was good is how did it make me turn? It's also, in, you know, the same example applies itself to a difference between bitterness and depression. How do you know if, what, like, if your thoughts are good Meaning you're not happy with the situation, you're not happy with what you're doing in life. How do you know if this thought is a good thought or a bad thought? What does it lead you to do? If it leads you to change, so great. But if it leads you just to be sad and not do anything about it, it's not coming from my thing. And they're saying being that these ideas, your novel, you're making up, if it's not, if it's not true, so you won't, won't actually work on yourself. You won't change. But the whole purpose of Darwin is not just to Darwin, but it's also to give you that ability to change yourself. And if you're not actually changing from it, then it's not really true. Being that it's something you've made up yourself. If it's the chassidus you're learning and you're just not applying it, so that's a problem, but it's not, so it's not, not true. It's just talking about, remember that we're talking about people that are novel, making novel ideas themselves. The time doesn't join, the vanish is disappearing immediately. A person with a profound mind may consequently discover deep and wondrous insights, especially when he extends his kavana over a substantial portion of the prayer text. For example, over one or more psalms or over several blessings, a person is in there with this idea and he's thinking about it and he's mulling over for a while so, and, he, and he has a good mind, so he could really come up with good things. Alternatively, he may come up with several novel in, in, insights into several places for a single prayer. And it could be coming from different one prayer, seven different, like several different insights. He has all these different ideas. So either it's, you could be having one idea that, that lasts over a few psalms or a few ideas in one psalm. Point is, he's making a person who's figuring out new ideas. His soul is elevated either way, and it feels good, and his soul is going up, and I'm connecting with these ideas. From his prior material state, a person is uplifted to refine a sublime one. Generally, this is comparable. Generally, this is comparable to an external, external engraving. So he's getting all refined, and he's feeling good, and everything's good is happening. Because generally, this is very external engraving. It's like just a little outline of the engraving of temporary duration, i.e. a polishing of the vessel's exterior. However, the uplifting feeling will not last long. In most instances, only a few hours 
although possibly half a day or a tiny day, such contemplation to be efficacious, efficacious, it's hardly possible. If it actually to last, it's not going to happen. So even you're doing these things, it's, chances are he's saying it's not going to happen. It's not going to last. It's not going to change. It's not going to work. It's not real. So don't waste your time doing it. <clears throat> this is also in the class in general and peripheral Veda. It doesn't constitute divine service at all. So it's not considered divine service. That's the main point. Now, one second. Let's make sure. Too late. Anyway, now in this latter category, distinction must be drawn. Page forty-four in the middle. Now in this latter category, in this latter, what we're talking about now, distinction must be drawn. There are elder chassidim who have studied much chassidus and who understand several subjects clearly and comprehensively. On occasions when these chassidim originate some explanation on the prayer, as mentioned above, their explanation is pre. Is pre predicated upon a conceptual principle that they are fully knowledgeable about on account of the prior study. He's saying this is sort of like the exception to the rule is elder chassidim and everyone's other chassidim and when they come up with these novel ideas it's based on foundations of chassidim and it's really, it's really ftara, they really know what they're doing. And now too while pondering the new insight they contemplate it at length and in detail and they, they think about what they're saying length and details of explaining before how to meditate based on its underlying conceptual principles, based off what they've learned from Siddhas, and that's how they're coming up with this idea. These individuals derive great pleasure from their own new insights, and then from meditating on well-established divine concepts that have been exp expl explicated by others. I mean, and, and also they have a, they enjoy it because it's coming up from them, meaning they've learned a lot of Siddhas. And so it's like, I guess maybe, I don't know if they're getting bored of it, it's like, Thinking about the same thing all over again, but yeah, it's the only thing they've taught themselves, they figured out, so they get a lot of time from it. On account of their own participation in this discovery, as explained also, and, and they like it even more. Why? Because they, they're the ones who made it. So it, it has a per, it's personal. The knowledge of a person who appreciates his own foot more than he does the head of someone else. It's like someone appreciates, we appreciate our foot more than someone else's head, meaning even though it's just a foot and that's a head. But our foot is ours, so it's just even greater. We we are more connected to it. So do it. The novel idea that he comes up with, even though there's plenty of chassidus, but this is his novel idea, so he's more connected to it. His own formal, yeah. Consequently, the subject matter reaches a very settled state within such a person's mind. And then if and so therefore he it, it like he learns it, he understands it, and it really connects this idea that he's figured out. And remember, the prophet says he's learned per, this person has learned a lot of chassidus. Is all, meaning older, not just in physical years, but also like the amount of learning and the amount of applying the chassidus. So then they come up with ideas themselves, similar to what we were talking about before. And the only real difference is they do everything right. It's just that it's theirs versus what they've learned in the Maimon. But it's based, its foundations are on the Maimon. It's not anything totally made up. Youthful chassidim. So that, and, and, and essentially that's, listen, that's, that's sort of acceptable, he says. Whereas youthful chassidus, what are people have a lot of chassidus? But the youth who haven't been exposed to much chassidus and who are unfamiliar with the full breadth of its concepts, their meditation is only superficial and absolutely cannot be considered genuine service. Where if you're a young person, meaning you have a lot of chassidus, so you should not be doing such a thing. Whatever you come up with, it's not good, wrong, stop doing it. In fact, it is very far from being true of Vedo. This is especially true in the very young whose eyes have not yet been open to chassidus. And I've barely seen anything among them are those who perform such stunts, attempting to find new insights into prayer. <laughs> they put a lot of effort into it. And this is what they concentrate on. So it seems like just another thing that like in those days, this was a very big phenomenon going around. So you had like kids. It's sort of nowadays a little more like Baruch and Yeshiva when they're young and they try to dove in Barbada as well. Like they don't know, you know, it's like John Walters, he told me, he was spoke last night. And when I was in show with him, he said when he wanted to stop Dhamma Mahaveda, he didn't know what to do. He was like 15 years old. So he started reading the words really slowly. Take a long time. So it's sort of this, it's a, in the same vein. Maybe this one is a little better, but it's the same vein that they just that they don't have enough citizens to start doing these things. And this is what they concentrate on. For these people, this practice is a virtual prohibition. He's saying for young people to do such things, it's it's prohibited. Through this, they damage the soul's capacity to apprehend a concept. 
they become incapable of grasping a concept fully with complete comprehension. It, just, it, it totally mixes them up and fuses them so they can't, they can't comprehend this properly when they try to do it because they've, they've warped themselves. Similarly, they, can, they are far from understanding true profundity and are unable to mentally absorb it. Yeah, so therefore they can't really un understand much. And then they're losing that ability to understand. In general, having become accustomed to delusion and inaccurate reasoning, they cannot grasp on the principles. So then being that their logic is flawed in what they're doing, so then they apply it into the actual system of learning. So the way they learn it, so this is flawed and it doesn't work. Yeah, consequently, they will never succeed in any intellectual endeavor or in the thought comprehension of a concept. So it's a harsh word. So he's saying if they don't, if they do this, then they're going to lose everything. They're going to ruin themselves and try to look at this. It's not going to work. And they're not going to stand to this problem. And it's going to be a slippery downhill slope. Certainly, then such a person is utterly divorced from the true meditation during prayer. And it and it brings about no salvation at all to the soul in terms of character improvement. And therefore, he doesn't understand it properly. So therefore, for sure, he can't understand the chassidus he's learning properly. So then for sure, he can't meditate on the chassidus that he's learning because he doesn't understand it properly. And then for sure, if he can't meditate on it and really connect to it, so then for sure, he can't work on himself to actually change his character traits because in order to change the character traits, you have to, you have to contemplate on the chassidus you're learning and try to apply it. But if you don't know the chassidus properly, you don't understand it, you know how to apply it. Anyone who desires life for his soul must flee a bush on our way. This is uh, from Genesis, meaning far away, far, like go, go away from, the, from this approach. One should seek neither to invent nor to originate, but only to learn and to understand well. And as Bjorn said yesterday, I want to say yesterday, he said, he's, like he talked about something, he said, learn it a hundred times. And I was thinking about it after. He talked about this beautiful safer, and he learned a hundred times. He didn't mean learn a hundred times so you understand it a hundred times well. He meant you learn a hundred times because you just have to like live with it. And, you, and, you, and that's what he's talking about here. Like you learn it you know, a few times until you actually understand it. And then you can just, you, you cock in it and you, you're freeing about it and you think about it and, and you meditate on it. And, and it's there, it's like, wow, what does that mean? And, and really, like you can sit on it. That's what he's saying. That's what we should focus on. Learn the chassidus and understand the chassidus and not trying to make these normal ideas, which I don't think many of us do have. One should seek neither to invent and originate, but only to learn to understand well. Then later, when on occasion, a person does perceive a new insight, possibly it may be genuine. So therefore, you might come through your davening, through doing all the right steps beforehand, you have to make sure the foundation is solid, essentially. See if our foundation is solid, as we said later before, that's, I'm pretty sure we said here that the, Maybe it's in somewhere else. Anyway, we said that uh, foundation of a building is in the ground. It has to be strong, but it's deep in the ground. You can't see it. So too, we have to have a strong foundation. And then when we build up, out, and these ideas might come to us. And, I'll, and if it does, by itself, so to speak, so that, well, that's, it's coming from the right place. But I did the right foundation. Results of superficial service. All of this, in general, is the fruit of a superficial service in which many people stumble in various ways in ways explained above and in other, others as well. All of this is due to the neglect in exerting oneself with true effort in a bona fide avoida, meaning stick to the basics, learn chassidus, learn well so you understand it, and then try to think about what does it mean and how to apply it to yourself. What is Rabbi trying to teach me? And how am I meant to change my life? What's the paradigm shift that I'm meant to be getting from this? And if you do that, it might come that during davening, you'll suddenly say, oh, wow, this is interesting. And this means this. And you'll connect with something, and that could be totally true. And that's totally fine. But the other way of doing it, just trying to make Hadushim and Davening, is not a good idea. Meaning, learn how to read the words, learn what it, the translation, and think about what that means. And, and, and that's it. And learn the Chassidus, and try to think about the Chassidus during Davening, take some time to think at a certain point. And learn this man, what does that mean? What am I meant to work on? How can, I, how can I work on myself? And that's how we're meant to do it. And that's the end of the brackets, a whole chapter of brackets, very interesting. Summary, in this chapter, he warns us against inventing novel interpretations to the prayer text. Since the effort, the effects are shallow, explains the difference between differences between the early Hasidim and today's youthful ones, and explains that young Hasidim must be extra cautious. Yeah, that the, young, that the older Hasidim, the ones like Hasidus, so then these novelties come more natural, they want to do it themselves because they connect to it more, but it's their idea. 
So he's like, okay, fine. That's, uh, fine. But young Chassidim shouldn't do it. They're not Chassidus. It's going to just ruin them. It's going to destroy them. But we should stick to the basics and learn Chassidus, think about the Chassidus, understand it well, and ask ourselves what does it mean to us and how we can apply it to ourselves. And that is the end of chapter three. Tomorrow, chapter four. Thank you very much for joining everybody. Have a great day.